Okay, what's up everybody? Welcome back to our remote writing workshop. We're posting a day early today because Greenleaf is officially making Juneteenth a company holiday to both educate ourselves and uplift our uplift and help our black community. So today we're going to take a peek behind the curtain and look at what an editor does at a publishing house all day. So many people hear the word editor and they only assume it's about catching mistakes in grammar and spelling, but it is so, so, so much more than that. That is just the tip of the iceberg, my friends. So Erin, tell us a little bit about what you do as an editor and where does it all begin when you first encounter a manuscript? Well, it, it's so true because whenever I tell anyone I'm a book editor, they usually ask, oh, so you work with commas and spelling and all that. And I have to kind of explain what it is I do. And <clears throat> excuse me, basically editing for grammar and spelling makes up about, I don't know, 5% of our job. And that is specifically known as copy editing. So that's a little part of it. But at Greenleaf, the editorial work really begins when we give input on manuscript submissions that we're considering for publication. So we initially give recommendations for the type of editorial service that a writer might need. So there's manuscript development, and that's when a writer has a solid idea, uh, but still needs a lot of editorial help writing a rough draft. Um, a developmental edit will help with reorganization and rewriting. Uh, so it's really looking at the content uh, overall and editing from there. A writer might also need a substantial edit for their completed rough draft. And this is also known as a line edit, which a lot of you probably have heard about. And an editor in this case might suggest better transitional material to improve readability. Um, we're looking to eliminate repetitive or wordy material. Uh, we'll tell the author when there's missing information, uh, when they need more information, when we need to rework confusing or awkward writing. Uh, we perform basic fact checking at that point. Um, and of course, in very rare cases, an author, their content might be perfect and they just do need that copy edit. And I use the manual, the Chicago Manual of Style and I focus on grammar and spelling. But again, that, that rarely happens. We really like to get in there and make sure the content is perfect. Um, and a smart writer usually listens to the recommendations uh, from their editor because we're giving a fresh set of eyes. We're someone who has read their manuscript. We don't know you, we're not family or friends. We're giving feedback and usually that recommendation does involve content editing, not just simply copy editing for grammar. So can you tell us what you mean by content editing? Yeah, and you know, a lot of people think that editors uh, don't even edit for content anymore. You know, they've heard stories and this just isn't true. We're still there editing everything. And there's a few big wig authors like Stephen King um, <laughs> that sometimes overrule their editors. Um, but these authors are few and far between. Um, but first thing a content editor can do is act as your desired final audience. And I mentioned, mentioned a fresh set of eyes earlier, and that really means that your editor is coming at your manuscript as one of your ultimate readers would. So they're going to bring up the same questions and concerns that your readers will have. So you want to listen to those issues before the book is published and before your readers have a chance to wonder and ask and not like your book. And so at that point, your content editor can suggest changes to um, your different elements, depending on whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction. So example, uh, we can provide specific direction on structure, tone, voice, dialogue, um, any muddled or unnecessary plot points or things you need to add to the plot, um, any loose ends that need to be addressed, um, if scenes are overwritten or underwritten, an editor can address pacing. Uh, and of course, then we're just rewriting the sentences themselves for clarity and style. Um, we also keep an eye out for any aspects that might turn off readers or bore them or confuse them because a lot of times when I work with authors, they, they stop and go, oh, well, let me explain that to you. This is what I meant. And unfortunately, you don't get a chance to explain anything to your reader. You can't stand beside them they, as they read and clarify things or, or make it better. So your editor is there from the beginning to make sure that the content of your book exists in its best form before the reader ever lays eyes on it. So that's what right. we do. Awesome. You guys do a lot. Um, so, so you spend all day reading and editing. That sounds like a dream job. 
<laughs> um, it, it is a dream job for those of us who love reading and writing. Um, and I've never met an editor who just, this is a job just to get a paycheck uh, until something else comes along. I, we really do eat, drink, sleep publishing. Um, we live for making dreams come true for writers. And as an editor, I simply have to read, whether it's a bestseller or the back of a shampoo bottle. I mean, I will read anything, <laughs> it's just in me. Um, and an editor is also someone who, sadly, for all my love of reading, I never have time to read for pleasure. It's so sad and people ask me, oh, have you read such and such a book and such and such a book? And I can just fear, the, the tears start welling in my eyes and I'm trying to remember the last time. I could sit down and had time to read something just for fun. Um, because I catch up on all of my content editing at night or on weekends, and that's because the actual editing is just the tip of the editorial iceberg. Um, because your editor is also your advocate in the publishing house, and that's pretty much our day job. So while an author's at home working on revisions, um, meetings are taking place at the publishing house between marketing, branding, publicity, distribution, design. And in those meetings, major decisions are being made regarding your book. And your editor is there to represent your point of view because usually the editors know your work best. And usually they know the authors best. And so as an editor, um, I do things like participate in titling meetings. And that's when the publishing team brainstorms the best titles and subtitles for a book, obviously. Uh, editors are often the ones who effectively communicate your vision to even design for the book cover and interior layout. Of course, they're talking with authors as well, but editors are involved. Um, editors are writing jacket copy, the rough draft of your jacket copy, the book's web copy, which appears on Amazon and other online book retailers. They're writing copy for the publisher's catalog, which the sales team uses to sell your book to Barnes & Noble and Amazon and airport stores. Um, editors are seeking text permissions, they're organizing footnotes and endnotes, the bane of my existence. Um, we collect and organize any art you want to include in your book, assemble those into art logs and, and make sure everything's clear for design. So we're pretty much involved in every step of the process from cheerleading your book from the very beginning to editing for content, to copy editing, uh, to creating titles, to writing copy, and basically proofing anything that contains words that surrounds the publication of your book. I know, and I know this working at Greenleaf, that our editors just, they do so much. So guys, always be nice to your editors. You know, how <laughs> much work they put in on the nights and weekends to make sure that your book is great. <laughs> All right. What can writers expect from their relationship with an editor? Oh, a great segue into that. I know. I was just going to say, you touched upon what I wanted to speak about. Um, and this might seem obvious, but some authors forget this. You want to have a really good working relationship with your editor. We are there to help make your book the best it can be. We are there as your support. Um, so from editing in the beginning, when you're both going back and forth for weeks or months on revisions, until the very day your book hits the shelves or Amazon, your editor is going to be involved in the process. And we're your advocate. We're not in a, in a fight against each other. Um, we are your, it's a partnership. And that's why you want to develop a personality as a writer that is very open to editorial feedback. You want to be known as a writer that works well with others. <laughs> so it's essential to communicate well with your editor and everyone else on your publishing team for that matter. Um, you can always take a stand for things you think are important in your work and by all means do that. Uh, but you can also do this in a kind, professional and humble way. And that's going to inspire your editor to really bend over backwards even more than we already do to make your book a success. Um, prima donna authors don't fare as well. Um, well, there are big money making exceptions, of course, but uh, you're, just remember your editor is your biggest cheerleader and we want to be. Um, we want to be your friend, your confidant, and we want to just help make your book the best it can be. And ideally, you want to have an editor stick with you throughout your literary career. Um, so just remember your editor is your advocate, your partner, your fountain of publishing knowledge. And if you're lucky, a huge support, uh, someone who's going to stick by you for years to come and help you as your writing career grows. And we try to do it all with a smile. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I love that. Yeah. And something that, you know, we, we know because uh, we see how hard you guys work is just something I want to reiterate. You know, you guys don't understand how much 
time and commitment editors put into making your book great. They give up their free time. They give up their reading time. They give up their me time to really focus on your book. So when we are, uh, when we're reviewing, we really want someone who is open to direction, open to collaboration, because that is the authors that we see have the best possible outcomes. And of course, the authors that are nice to their editors, because the editors are really, they, they are your advocate and they are your, they're your partner throughout the entire process. You're really going to be working um, so closely with them. So it's really, really important to remember that. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, and most, my authors are fantastic and most authors totally get this. And especially when they get in and see how the process works and they go, oh, this is improving my work and we're working and we're collaborating and it's going so well. Then they're so enthusiastic that that just comes with it. You know, you don't have to tell yourself, be nice to someone because it's just a wonderful relationship. Yeah. So yeah, it just usually works out that way. So it's few and far between that you get someone who's really cranky. <laughs> yeah. And don't, and you know, don't be, don't be afraid to speak up to your editor about like, because that's the whole point of a partnership. You should be able to communicate, you know, if you have questions about their edits or, you know, I really, I really don't understand where you're coming from on this edit. Can you explain it a little more? And that's where your editors will really come into play and help you understand where this transition might be better because your reader is going to read it as this and they're they're really there they're really there to help you and we just we love our editors here at greenly <laughs> thank you and we love you <laughs> okay so erin what is our assignment for this week well um i just want to get you thinking kind of about working with an editor in the future so whether you're gonna be hiring a freelance editor or working with an editor publishing house, it's a good idea to just kind of think of some questions that you would like to ask them, um, maybe in your initial meeting um, or even before then. So kind of decide the most important items you would seek in an editor, you would want in an editor. Should they have experience in your genre? Uh, do you want someone with tons of years of experience under their belt or do you want someone that's a little more young and ambitious and uh, has a younger voice as well. Um, you can ask how they edit on hard copies or electronically. Some authors want you to get out a manuscript and write on the page. I mean, not very many anymore, but it depends on how you'd like to work as well. So what questions do you have for them about the editorial process? So really decide what means the most to you, write them down. And so when you do seek an editor or you get one at a publishing house, you refer to this list. Because again, that relationship between author and editor is one of the most important ones that an author can have. Yeah, we're, we're extremely lucky that, um, you know, the authors that we work with are just so, they're so wonderful and they're so, they're so great and they treat our editor so nicely. Um, I know, it makes it all worthwhile. Exactly. And we just, we're there to make them happy. I mean, that's my motivation because I want my authors to be happy. I want them to be happy with their book and as you were saying how it's so important to explain to the author you know our reasons for changing and stuff like that because you want someone to be very comfortable with this is their baby and how it turns out and so yeah it's part of that collaboration i'm working on the marketing with one of our authors dr candace good and uh she is just she just raved about jessica and how you know just uh how thoughtful she was and how she explained everything so that's really, you know, you really want to have a great relationship because they're, they're your person throughout the entire, the entire process. Mm -hmm. Your cheerleader. Exactly. Go team. <laughs> um, okay. So Aaron, that was awesome advice. And honestly, you, you guys do so much. So from everybody who I think is watching this video can agree with me. Thank you for all that you do, because you guys really make the books what they are and you know we like i said we have great authors at greenleaf who come in and they really they really trust editor our editors and what they have to say so thank you guys for always being so open-minded and ready to just uh put in the elbow grease a little bit when coming to work um and also thank you to you aaron and to all the editors who you know they 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 love this so much that they are doing this on the weekends or doing this during the evenings and you know, sometimes you may not know, but they, they really put in the extra miles to make sure the book is successful. So thank you from everybody. Well, you are too kind. And I think we all do. Everyone who's in publishing, we just love what we do. And it's an honor and a privilege. And, you know, we're, we're, we love what we do. So that's why we do it. So it definitely, it, it makes a big difference. So 
Awesome. Love that. Okay. So guys, make sure you are letting us know how you like these videos. I love getting your DMs about the writing exercises. We love to see it. We love to see your responses, your reactions. We love to see you trying out the writing exercises, sending us the writing exercises. Just keep it coming and let us know what you'd like to see more of. Um, you know, as we know, this whole COVID is still, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty. So we are here to help best we can guide you in the ways that we know how and we know what to do when it comes to writing. So make sure you guys are letting us know if there's anything you'd love to see from us um, and make sure you're of course um, engaging with us on Instagram. These videos are on YouTube. They're now being posted on LinkedIn if you're not really um, on a lot of the main social media handles. Uh, we're posting them on LinkedIn as well. So really, really let us know how you're liking this because that of course only makes us do better with these videos. So we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.